Hey, thank you for joining the Crappie Blog, Crappie Cast. Today's guest is Whitey Outlaw. Yep, I'm Whitey Outlaw, and I've been around a good while with this business, you know, and uh, I'm very proud to be here to help you with this podcast. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, where you where you hail from, Whitey? I'm from South Carolina. I live on the big lake of Santee Cooper, up on the swamp end of the lake, and uh, that's pretty much where I was born and raised up there, so that's my home lake, and I kind of like it there, yeah. Awesome. Hey, so one of the things that I've been asking anglers is if you had to choose out of all the products, a fisherman is fishing, we keep a bunch in our boat, but if you had to choose top five products that you would say make you a more successful angler day in and day out on the water, uh, what would those be if it's just one of the, like when you're thinking about it, think of like a product that, man, if you lost, like left it at the house, you'd have to turn around and go get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Something like that. Well, you know. Naturally, you got to have tackle, and I ain't even gonna talk about that. Tackle or rods, you automatically gonna have that, you know, in numerous colors. But uh, one thing, you always wanna make sure you got your life jackets for safety, and then make sure you got enough for anybody on board because you are responsible for them as a as a driver of the boat and a boat owner. You know, and try to obey all the laws, whatever they require you to have with fire extinguishers, whistles, or what have you. But you know, number one is a rain suit. I don't care where you at, I'm going to wear that rain suit in the mornings to keep the, the water off of me, riding to where I'm at or coming back. And you know, especially in the summer months, you have these pop-up storms mm-hmm. that they don't even call for, because the weatherman, he gets paid to lie to us. Right, so. right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, rain suit's number one, and uh, a first aid kit, you always got to have something there to uh, you know, help get a hook out or put something on a band-aid or whatever. I, I usually keep a big roll of black tape in there because that's my band-aid that's pretty right. much. But you know, it's common sense that you got to have food. But if you're fishing in the summer months, you certainly want to keep something to keep you dehyd- you know, hydrated out there because it's very easy to get overheated in the hot summer sun. But we, 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 you know, in the last 30 years, we found out we can catch just as many in the summertime and 100 degree days as we can, you oh, know, yeah. in the spring of the year. So. So keep something to keep you hydrated and sunblock and sunscreen. You know, if you got small kids in the boat, you certainly got to have something for them because that sun will eat them up. But up in the swamp where I fish, two things that I got to have is what we call a grass rake. I got to have them to, to pull them lilies back and make little holes to fish through and, and a dip net. What's a grass rake look like? Oh, it's very simple, man. It, it, you know, everybody asks me that, and uh, it ain't nothing but a piece of ten foot conduit with a twelve inch bend on the end, a twelve inch it's ninety like, bend. Like a hook. Yeah, just a hook, something you know to open the grass up. So not an actual like rake. No, it's just it's... one piece, and you know we stick it in there and tear a little round hole, and but that doesn't spook the fish or anything when you do. No, no, because you know if you watch some of my videos, I don't ever shut the little motor off. I run trees, I pull up on the grass, I leave it idling and stuff, and so. No, it don't spook them, and, wow. and people say, well, on live scope it spooks, and it does, because I fish a lot of live scope stuff too, but the difference is they sitting out there suspended around nothing. So when you pull up there, you know, and they might spook off when you flip a jig or stand up, but when they in this structure on grass, they can't see you. Plus, if they're on trees, they're just gonna tighten up to that tree. Mm-hmm. But when they're in the open water, they're gonna spook off because they got nothing to hide around. Right. And that's just, that's my theory now. Yeah. I can't prove it, it's my theory. But you got to have a grass rake, sunscreen, um, always, no matter what you do, carry your cell phone or something because you might get overheated, you might get hypothermia, you got to, and tell people, you know, and you don't carry this, but you tell people where you're putting in. I'm going to be putting in at this part of the lake, I'm going to be here, and when, if you take out and move to another part of the lake, call this somebody over because you might break down or, your phone go dead, you have a flat tire. I mean, you know, all kind of things to do. And the older I get, the more I realize that. Back when I was younger, I didn't. You just went. I didn't <laughs> win. It didn't matter, man. You wouldn't even have a spare tire most of the time. We just went. But, um, you know, that, that, that's four things I think you need. But, you know, the other one is just fishing. Enjoy fishing. You take that with you everywhere you go, man. It gets to the point that it becomes a job. And trust me, I've had that problem. Um, fishing tournaments all them years, it, was, it wasn't pleasure. It was fun, but it wasn't pleasure because it was a business. I mean, we, right. we made it into a business on my end. And uh, when you're doing that, I mean, 
pressures on you and all. You, you make some, sometimes you don't make very good, safe decisions. You do things that you normally wouldn't do. I mean, in the years past, we filled them boats all the way up with water, you know, and in, in the wind. Mm -hmm. Dangerous thing, man. Dangerous thing. And, uh, but rain suit, sunscreen, telephone, and always, always, if you out there fishing, you see somebody broke down, stop and help them a little bit because you don't know what kind of bind in it could be any kind and never leave no one. But the main thing that I got to have in my boat every time I go, I don't care what it is. People say, what? I carry a little hand barometer. Really? And the boat. Even in the swamp fishing in the shallow water, I carry a little hand barometer. I keep it in the boat so I can just check. I like to run tests on the fish, you know, with mm -hmm. products and the different things and yeah. scents and depths of water, time of the year, and, and that barometer comes in handy to me. So do and you uh, think, being, being, being a guy that looks at the barometer, do you think that the barometer, say for your area, is, is what, what's a good barometer reading for you? I don't so you want it rising too fast. I don't want it rising at all. If I can keep it steady or just a slight, slow fall, seem to be the best for us over there. So do you think it's different in different parts of the country? Yeah, I think it's different in parts of the country because you got, you know, it's like Tornado Alley. Right. You got tornadoes. So, so absolutely the barometer out there is a different area than, than what we got back home, I think. And, uh, but you can get too much, I guess you call it scientific or too much, read too much into it, but when I was fishing tournaments, I, I didn't, I try not to overlook little things because the little things meant a lot. That's like, you know, you leave the boat ramp in the morning and you, two of you fishing, I'll be running the boat, running down the lake, whoever I'm fishing with, they'd be unrolling the poles, getting everything. So when we set up, I walk up and put the trolling motor down, open my seat, sit down or take the rods. And we had to try to have that time down to where we could put all the rods out in 16 minutes, but then four and a half to five minutes. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, at the end of the day, I'll be fished an hour to an hour and a half longer than the average guy moving. Because yep. it takes so long to get set up. So there's little things that add up. But, you know, when you're in a boat, though, and you're out there, always, if you ain't got a cell phone, you care or a weather radio or something. Because these summertime storms, it drowns a lot of people on our lake. It's, it's a big lake, and it's a long lake, and a lot of swamp. And... Uh, People get up there, they get turned around, and the storm comes, they panic. They, they, we, we get a lot of guys get drowned out there, you know, wow. and, and it's, it's not a good thing. But And always your life jacket. You always got to have a life jacket with you because it's the law. And it's the only life that's going to save is yours. That's right. So I believe in that boater safety stuff because we see it, and, and I see it more and more now, and I know you have too, but it's... Uh, college and high school bass fishing. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing. I'm glad to see the young people getting into sports, but they they are not seasoned boat runners. They're not seasoned boat drivers. And in the last what, six, eight months, we've had several wrecks and some of them been bad. But don't think it can happen just to the kids. It can happen to grown people too. Old guys have been on the lake a long time. Yep. And so and they get complacent and yep. running and you oh, get, I know this is You here. get comfortable with it. Yeah, you know, you it's get... like, like say at home running a table saw or something. Mm -hmm. You get your thumb cut off because you got comfortable with That's it. Right. You know, as long as you're scared of it, it won't hurt you. Mm -hmm. sure. but, but you know, all the fishermen got different things, but you know, when you go through the whole list of it, God, you got poles multiple poles, you got multiple heads, you got multiple skirts. If you had to pick one rod to use and say this is my, say all purpose rod or go to rod, which one Which one are you choosing? If I, when I was in the tournaments, I always like a 14 to 16 foot rod, you know. Now that I don't fish in many tournaments and I just fish around the house there and on the lakes and stuff, I use a 10-foot jig pole, precision jig pole that, you know, a signature series that I got out. But, you know, it's simple. I, I use simple stuff. I mean, these guys come down here and want to fish with us and all, and, you know, they see where I've been fishing all these years. They get in the boat and say, God, man, this is all you got. Hey, that's all I need. Yeah. 
you know, two, jig, two 10 foot jig poles, some bait, some line, 12, 12 pound test line in the winter time because we catch a lot of bass, you know, and 10 pound throughout the rest of the year. And, but, you know, always, no matter what you do, if you come home from work and grab your young one or your daughter and want to run down into the lake a little bit, man, make sure you got everything you need already in the boat because with kids in the boat, there's a lot of things you got to have. Oh. Band-aids, oh, yeah. uh, mural spore. Oh yeah, everything. Snacks. You gotta have some kind of a shade for them. Especially oh yeah, it's you gotta have. Summer, you know. I take a big umbrella with me and I set my daughter under that thing, you know, in the summertime she gets hot. Cause, hey, you sit up there in front of that boat on a 95 degree day and no wind, you're cooking. Mm -hmm. You absolutely, absolutely are cooking. So you got to have something to put on you for that. You got to wear some long sleeve, thin shirts and stuff. But, uh, Safety is not number one, man, because you can get messed up bad. But for just five items that you got to have, the five main items, you know, number one, fishing pole, baits, ice cooler to keep your fish in. A lot of people put them in the ice, I mean, in the live well, and, and they don't tend to them. They die and they look bad. I always throw them out on ice, you know, if I ain't in no tournament because it just, they look better on ice. And, uh, do, you, I, do you bleed your fish? You talking about like uh, cutting the gill, cutting that the gills to let them bleed no, out? No, no, I've seen a lot of people do I've that. I've seen people do it. I've never done it. Before. Yeah, I, I don't do it. You know, I put them in the in the cooling, and we get home, we clean them that night or the next morning or something. Or I give I give most of mine away because I I got a lot of elder people in our county that that don't fish, and then at the church they eat a lot of fish for the men's supper. So I I clean a bunch and give away a bunch, and you know. A, I fish five or six days a week, so there's no way possible I can eat that many. Right. And I don't put them in the freezer very much because I'm lucky enough to be able to catch a mess if I got to eat or, or cook for somebody. Sure. But you know, five items in the boat, I can't tell you five items. I can tell you 25 items right. or 30 items because it's just so much we got to have. I mean, you go out there, and if, if I'm a sponsor, just say, kind of going off page what we're talking about, just say if I was a sponsor, I'd heat brother sponsor a crappy fisherman than I had a bass fisherman. Because if you go through a crappy boat, you see we got multiple units, we got multiple poles, we got multiple baits, multiple heads, all kind of stuff, mineral buckets, oxygen tanks. We got everything that you could dream of and not even dream of, where a bass fisherman only has three or four rods and box crank baits or something. Mm -hmm. So if I want to sell product, I'm gonna sell it to a crappy guy because yeah. I'll make more money off of him, and you know we just spend more money. We, that's why we all yeah. broke. <laughs> and, you know, you think you look at say a uh, a single bass bait maybe fifteen dollars, yeah. you know, but how many colors of one jig do you have? You know what I mean? Man, I so, couldn't so tell you, you spent, because right there, if you're looking at the business side of it, you, you're looking you, at thousands you know, of colors, right? Three or four hundred different jig companies. Oh, yeah. Same way with jig heads, different styles of spinners without. And all. It, it's no end to what we use. And, and there's new stuff still being coming out all the time? Every day, boy. Every day you pick up Facebook or something, or somebody will call you, send you a newsletter, say, look, look at these new products or that. And, and you know, I kind of quit fishing tournaments last year because I got lucky enough to make money at the first one I ever fished th almost 40 years ago, and then I got checking the last one. And, but I'm still in the fishing business. I do a TV show and stuff, and I still like to take people fishing that's never been fishing. I like to take them and let them enjoy it, let them see it, and introduce the, the, the outdoors to it, especially young people, because the young people is what's gonna pick it up and run with it yeah. for the next 20 or 30 years, because we're going, we're going the other way, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, and I've seen this fishing world, and you have too, but I've been in it a lot longer than a lot of you, and I've seen it go full circle around where we started with one pole many years ago, then we went to multiple poles, now we're back to one pole again, so full circle. But yeah. I've seen, I've even seen on, on my lake, you know, it was uh, years ago, guys with two rods, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and then it went spider rigging, yeah. and then now it was, or then it was back down to one rod. And you're starting to see people, even with live scope, that are coming out and they're starting to use eight rods again. Yeah, oh yeah. Because they've realized, and that's, that's a lot of work standing up all day, or even standing sitting down all day, then chasing one fish or trying to fish, that they would just rather sit down and be yeah, relaxed just, just again. Push them and, jigs and push them minnows and stuff, yep. and uh, it's relaxed fishing. And it's a lot of fun. And long line trolling, you know, we do a lot of that. And I've never, 
I don't think I've ever fished maybe one or two tournaments where I long line troll. The rest of it was always spider rigging because that's where I seemed to catch a better grade of fish, slowing down targeting structure and stuff. But uh, this live scope stepped up and <laughs> if you want to name today in today's world, one of the main things you don't want to leave home without your live scope yeah. unit because it, the yeah. way the things are falling. Yeah, you know, I've talked to people that said I've I've got to the boat ramp, my motor was running fine, trail motor was good, everything was good. Yeah. But but my black box wouldn't turn on. I wouldn't. And I turned around and I went home. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and I say all these guys that's really good at it, if we take the black box away from them, can we beat them every day? Every day. But because they don't fish no other way. Right. That they done lost, or I say lost, all of them have. But some of them has lost the natural fishing ability, or uh, and I, I know that's probably gonna make somebody mad. But, <laughs> but it, they've lost the natural fishing instinct to get out there and hunt fish. You know, and now they go out there and they ain't got to really to do nothing but back the boat off, put the unit down, and start looking, start yeah. hunting for fish. You know, they ain't got to say, okay, we're going out here on these sandy points or we're going on these drop offs. To start looking fall on this creek channel because yeah, of the, it, yeah yeah i mean once you put all that together y your natural instinct with the live scope it's a hard thing to beat i don't right. care who it is absolutely absolutely but you know to, to sit here and say i need five five really imported items man it's more than five i, I just can't sit here and tell you five but i think the most important one's the boat plug Boat plug, though, I'm going to tell you that. Yeah, nobody, and all, and all the anglers I've interviewed, nobody said you can't forget that plug. If you, you know, you got to have that. I mean, but that's supposed to be common sense. You yeah. know, make it float, you got to yeah. plug it. But how many times ain't we all back then? As soon as you got back to the boat, it's half full of water. Either you're back in, mm, that pull back you up. You want to know what I do, have done it the most is when I'm away from my home lake and going to go fish a new lake. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to go fish, excited, or something's going on. Yep. Like, and I just, I, I forgot it twice, and both times, weird enough, I've been at Dale Hollow. Really? Five and a half hours from home, back in, and I was so ready to get out there and fish, back the boat down, and parked it, parked the truck and trailer, get back down to the boat, and I noticed water up yep. in the floor. I was like, man, so I had to go back do Load everything back all over up. again. That's right. That's right. And, I've but, done but it. I've done it twice now, and both times I've been at Dale Hollow, and it's because I said I'm so excited to get out there and fish that it's, it's a new lake, and it's just like you talked about earlier, though. Just slow down, do do your checklist, do, do, you, do, know, you know, go through everything because at the end of the day, safety is of the utmost importance. You're gonna forget something, but I try not to forget nothing because I leave my boat packed with everything that I got to have. I usually don't take nothing out unless it runs out and I got to replace it, but uh. We was coming out the swamp one morning, it was pouring down rain, we were duck hunting. And uh, you know, about 10 o'clock in the morning, we was coming out and the boat was full of water and we didn't have no bills pump in it. So I just pulled the plug, you know, got up on plane, letting it run out. Well, I hit a stump, knocked the plug out of my hand. Mm. It flipped out the back of the boat. So we were running along there and I said, I can't stop. We got to go all the way to the landing. And I took a rag and packed in it and got the trailer in the water. But things happen, boy. Oh yeah. They happen. Right. When, when you least expect it to. Yes, sir. And, and, one morning, the boy I was fishing with, we was coming down the lake, and it was in the summertime, and uh, he took the plug out and messing with it back there, and we were running down the lake, and he had a stump, he had his head down, and the motor flew up, and he hit it, and knocked him down in the back of the boat, and we were cutting circles out there, you know. Where are your kill switch, guys? Yep. Take and put that kill switch on, because like I say, it ain't going to save nobody's life but your own, yep. and that's, you know, and live jackets, people, I ain't wearing no live jacket. It's no sin, or it don't be little. You just throw it around your neck. That's right. I mean, I've stepped and they out. They don't make them anymore. Where they their belts. That's you right. Know, it's just a little bit. Like like it doesn't it's even just, look like a fanny pack. I mean, it's just a little belt. And I have fell out the boat before, you know, yeah. and step out the boat doing things. And I seen a guy one time on the Alabama River, the long line trolling, and he had his motor on autopilot. And he was trolling, and he sl spun the seat around and fell out the boat. Mm -hmm. But the boat's still going. They need to put a kill switch on trolling motors mm -hmm. because he fell out the boat. And I mean, it was going right on. And so I went over and picked him up and we run the boat down, you know, and got it. But if I hadn't have been there, he could have went down and yeah. that was it. He didn't have a life jacket on or nothing, mm -hmm. but the boat was still autopilot. So, you know, it, anything can happen, but don't think, and when you think it ain't gonna happen to you, look out, it's yeah, coming. That's right, here it it's comes. It's coming, that's here right, it comes. that's right. Awesome. 
Well, Whitey, I sure do appreciate you coming on the show. Yes, sir. Talking Matt, about products you and what you use and how to keep people more safe out on the water. Yeah, safety is number that's, one. That's, that's that's but man, I do appreciate it. Yes, Thank sir. You, sir. Yes, sir. Anytime I can help you, let me know. Thank you. Yes, sir.